All right, come on, let's get this cracking. Welcome to yet another episode of the CYPT Podcast, the podcast of the most strongest, fastest, powerfulest t-shirts print shop on this side of the Eastern Seaboard. Did I do that right? Absolutely. All right. All right. We showcase not only ourselves here at Can You Picture This on our podcast, but we also showcase other entrepreneurs in the in the in this industry and in other industries as well and just to get you know people out there let them know what they're doing how they're doing it how they did it and perhaps it may intrigue you guys on opening up a business yourself like one of those or our business so today's topic we're going to be talking about uh The importance of going to uh, school. Is it important for graphic design? We got Niles here. What's going on, Introduce yourself. Oh, what's going on, everybody? I'm just Niles. And I'm sorry, I I didn't give a formal introduction. I'm Clay, your host, also known as Fearless. And we also have over here... Just Niles, and we have... uh, your boy Lance and behind the cameras. Your boy Lance behind the camera. Doing his thing as usual. All the time. So, yeah. I really, uh, I actually wanted to ask you uh, your side of it, too. I want to do more of the pros and cons of uh, what it was like uh, taking the school path and then uh, what was it like uh, being self-taught right. in graphic design. Okay. Uh, one of the, and I also wanted to talk about the difference between uh, graphic design in school and class. And uh, graphic design uh, out in the real world being mm-hmm. more applicable to uh, where you work at. Right. Uh, in school, you know, one of the first things they asked uh, me in my class was, which one is better, a fast designer or a good designer or a great designer? The answer uh, was a fast designer. That was the right answer. And that doesn't sink into you when you're first in school. Because uh, you go in... With the intent to be an artist, that's what I did. I first wanted to uh, draw cartoons. And I was later led to uh, graphic design through the different uh, courses I went through. Mm. So with that in mind, you, when you're in school, you have a week, maybe a month, you know, to complete a project. And that's just not the same uh, out here where we work, especially for us. Oh, yeah. All we do is speed. Oh, yeah. Every day, all day. Uh, so I got through my classes. I, I, I was pretty up there. It was good. So you went to uh, Spex Howard, was it? I first went to CCS, and then I went to uh, Spex Howard. Okay. And uh, I did the, uh, it was called Entertainment Arts at CCS when I first got there. And when I went to Spex Howard, uh, it was the graphic design program. And they kind of helped me to, narrow or focus on what I wanted to do. So I'm doing the graphic design classes and um, I'm out in the, the I didn't graduate and I'm out in the real world now and I go to a, a graphics company and uh, you know, I got my portfolio and everything, right. all, all that stuff they tell right. you to bring with you and let's check you out and see what you can bring. So they the take a look at my portfolio and I mean, they look at it for a minute, but it, it, the truth is, it does. Your portfolio is good to have, but the only thing that matters is can you do the job. So inside your portfolio was the training and things that you did in school. And you know what? Or was it other things that you did on your own outside of school? So were they school projects or stuff that you created? They're you both. Know, on your when own? they 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 tell you to have uh, both when you uh, uh, graduate. Okay. And I saw it last night, but I, I didn't think we were doing this today. I really would have brought it. Mm. So they look at it. It's cool. And they're like, uh, well, they do what, it, what any uh, graphics place to do. You know, um, we got a flyer that's doing an hour. 
no, no, no. They tell me uh, uh, they have a flyer that's due. I said, cool. They said, so we want you to put it together and show us uh, how good you are. I said, great. I got it. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow uh, with it. And they was like, no, you can use this computer right here. And, uh, right. You can sit right here, and uh, I'll be back in an hour. See what you come up with. <laughs> Culture shock. Had no idea what to do. I panicked. Anyways, he came. Uh, they came back, and uh, it it wasn't good. You knew it wasn't good. Oh, I, I, yeah, so man. What, what, like, I, what was what was some of the excuses that you say? Like, I'm not used to this computer. Yeah, I told him this is a different photo. You know, this different what, Photoshop. I'm used to version five, yeah. and you got two. I'm used to this laptop, and yeah, I told him all the other okay. stuff, and they, uh, they were like, all right, well, you know, not yet. So I went to another graphics uh, place, and they gave me an internship. And it was there where I began to understand a little more of where my teacher said a fast designer is better than a great, you know, a great designer. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what people want more. That's what's necessary. And there they helped me to get faster. So, yeah, so I was under this other graphic designer. So I would handle the smaller projects, but he really had to kick stuff out. And the rate that I would see him kick stuff out and how fast he could do it and how well he could do it let me know just how far I was from where I needed to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was this, they had this um, this design off where they had, it, it, there was three other interns uh, with me. So they put us all on these computers and everything. Then there was this other guy that came in who owned another graphic spot and some other stuff. And we had an hour to put together this flyer and we wanted some, a t-shirt or something like that. Anyways, I lost. Uh, we all lost actually. Uh, Cause none of us were still able to uh, do that yet. And the guy was, the guy was trying to explain to us if there's 30 orders on the board, you don't have all day to put a design together from the ground up. He, before I got here and you taught me to snatch he told me that. Yeah. Snatch. Well, basically, you want to get uh, something that's based, already done is based on what you're doing. You know, so if you got like, uh, you're doing a party flyer or something, you probably already got uh, templates or the actual flyer and you just, you want to remix it. So you want to get in, get that flyer in and out as quickly as possible. So you don't really don't want to start from scratch. Um so that was one of the main key things that I was trying to teach you when you first got here, that speed was very important. And as you got in the fire and you learned, you, know, <laughs> you learned that very quickly. Um, but another question I wanted to ask you now, you went to both of these schools. Yeah. How much, how much did they cost? How much was the cost of CCS is $32,000 a semester. $32,000 a semester. <laughs> okay. So how CCS. many semesters did you take? I was there for two years, and I... So that's what... How many semesters is that? I have a lot of student debt. <laughs> so, so you racked up... I you have, racked up just... Um, how much in student debt with, with both schools? Ooh, shoot. Hang on. I don't know about specs, because specs went down, so I'm not... You didn't have to... You was off the hook? I don't know yet. Uh, all of okay, it's... Well, okay, no, 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 no. All of it's closed. Because okay. of the re, re, just say it stayed open or, or whatever. I'm just trying to get a num. You know I'm a numbers man, so I'm just trying to get a number on how much you owe in student debt for graphic design altogether. If you can just put it in a, in a nutshell, I was up in the I was up in the hundreds. Up in the hundreds. I was up in the hundreds. up in the hundreds of thousands. I was up in the hundreds. I definitely high high there. hundreds over the one fifty mm-hmm. threshold. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. because not only <laughs> okay so. CCS is one of the top art schools on this planet, okay? Students from all over the world try to go to that school. The art, the the material you have to use for your art classes is astronomical, okay? The housing, there's it. I didn't stay there. In fact, almost no one who lives in Detroit stays there because it's too much. I caught the bus back and forth. And then after that, uh, Specs Howard. Specs Howard was more affordable, but I still ended up coming off some racks for them. So, but you, you, you actually went there to 
do comic books? You I went that? there. My I wanted to do wanted. animation. Okay. Well, animation. I'm sorry. Let me tell you what I wanted to do. I wanted to tell my story, and I wanted to tell my story my way, and I knew exactly how I wanted to do it. I wanted to go to CCS ever since I was the first time I walked the hallways uh, back in high school. I knew it. I saw the art they were doing there, and I was like, "This is the place for it." So you went on a tour to like a tour they, to CCS mm-hmm. from uh, uh, high you, school. Or you prep was right across the street from me. Oh, okay. So we can go over there all the time, and then I did schedule a tour for myself, and uh, I forget the guy's name. Uh, Cliff, I know Cliff showed me around, and uh, Sabrina Nelson, she showed me around, and, and uh, they they were uh, they 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 really helped me out there. Uh, but what they teach you there is almost the opposite of what you just told me. When you're building something in those classes, they teach you to build from the very ground up. They don't teach you to snatch. They teach you to build from the very ground up. Mm -hmm. And that's why I do that a lot. And that's why I did it all the time when I first got it, because that is your training. Your training is to, like I said, although we were talking about something earlier, when I first went, uh, I went to do cartoons, right? So I wanted to do it until I found out that it takes 32 clips for one second of a cartoon. That was too much for me. And then you had told me, like, well, there's no faster way to do it. Yes, there is a faster way to do it. I'm sure now, but in school, they teach you from the ground up. Mm-hmm. So they always teach you, build it from, and, I, and until you get out here, you don't you don't know that that's what you need to do. So, reflecting back after the hundred and fifty rack eggs that you spent, <laughs> do you think that it was worth it? Yeah, and why? I honestly think it helps me with my job, with my graphic design. Um, there are certain things that you retain in school. That do help, but they're more. It's more like dialing a phone number that you can only dial. You can't remember. So when I design something a certain way, I try to drag your eye from one part of something to the other, and I do that purposely by doing certain things in the design. Uh, I know that these colors will make these pop out more. I know that if I put this over here, I know it's going to affect this over here. Visually, mm-hmm. you you get some of that from school, from training, from someone else. Someone passed that down to you because someone passed that down to them. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even design the way I do if it wasn't for the things I learned then. That extra so, spark, that lets you know I did it. It comes from that. So you know how you go to school, right? And yeah. they're teaching you square roots and all this other stuff, right? Yeah. You're like, I don't need that in the real world. Now, is it like certain things that you can say, like if you was somebody's mentor, mm-hmm. is it certain things that you can tell them to skip all that? Or would you suggest you need to go to school and spend this 150 rack eggs? Uh, or could you like just just could you give a class? Say could you? I do, could teach could you, now. Could you teach a class? I, I could teach now. A crash course. I ew. a crash course. Just say I don't know, maybe four or six weeks, and get and get somebody right where they can, you know, be all right. Or would you suggest that the, they go to school and spend? Where I th- where I I think the I think the sweet spot would be to teach someone um, the art, but also explain to them every day you need to get faster at this because it's going to be about the speed, and that's what that's what I don't think is ever truly expressed mm-hmm. in in a in a classroom. They teach you the art which is cool but they need to teach the art and they need to teach it faster and faster daily Mm -hmm. 
you should have less. The, 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 okay, we did this. Okay, but now we need to do this faster. Okay, now we need to do this faster. The reason I could do flyers fast is because I make flyers every day, and I make them every day fast. Mm -hmm. And you taught me that they have to be that fast. Mm -hmm. I would like to teach someone with enough time, but I would drill. I would make, it would be an important thing to know that the speed is everything in this game. Mm -hmm. It is at anything that you do, the speed is everything in this game. Right. Especially with us here. Um, the other thing that I don't really teach you about graphic design is that it has to be applied and made tangible to something. There's a couple shop classes in, in the program, but they don't really teach you what we do here. Everything from socks, mugs, stand-ups, obituaries, T-shirts, they, they put you on a computer. Mm -hmm. But that's only the first step. So... Pretty much now, you got, like, new programs that's out that, and like you say, even on the, the Photoshop, the programs that you probably used in CCS and uh, Specs Howard, is that the programs that you use, Photoshop and the Illustrator? Mm -hmm. So now they got, like, tutorials. You know, you click this button and it's like they tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, do you think that a beginner, some somebody just starting out, one one to get into Photoshop, wanting to do what we do, would they still? Do you think have to go to school, or could they just go the route of being self taught? Like I was self taught myself, but back in the day when you had this program, there wasn't uh, tutorials. tutorials like there are, are now. Um, so somebody that's hungry and want to learn, could they go out and do it themselves via YouTube, uh, YouTube or, uh, you know, uh, Canva. They got, you know, these different programs out like Canva, which makes it easier. Could they go out and, and start a business without going to school? Do you think that's possible? Well, or have someone like you yourself teach them, um, uh, in a class or give them a crash course where they can keep that money in their pocket and still go after their dreams. I think the only difference between going to school and learning it yourself is that you get to avoid some of the brick walls. There's someone who's already hit this brick wall for you. So they tell you how to get around it before you even get there. I also feel that that, that may be a small setback because sometimes you do need to hit that brick wall because once you hit it, you automatically know how to avoid that. Like you, and almost better. But when someone makes a flyer on Canva and brings it to us, there's always something that we still have to change that if it was done professionally, it would have never had to be changed in the first place. Mm -hmm. We charge a certain price to print, but we also charge a certain price to design. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know like entertainers say, once I pick up that microphone, I got to get paid. Right, well, right. once I, once I touch this mouse, you know, if I didn't send it straight to print, right. this is technically a design. Right. So they make these, they make, th they make these designs with no bleed room, and uh, so a certain it's too it's, so so the technical things that they teach you in school, you think they need that, like bleed lines, because I've seen some work from some beginners that's hey, you know what? With a little bit of help, mm -hmm. you can be all right. Uh, my wife is incredible. She's without any schooling or is incredible. nothing. She picked that. Up, she picked it up. Like, I right, can you can you try and do this flyer? And I was like blew back. So I think the creativityness that a person has inside them <laughs> helps them out tremendously when when designing. You have to be a creative person. So if you got that creative side to you, I think that you can go a long way without spending one hundred and fifty thousand dollars going to school. Uh, I think that, you know, a person can mentor you into, uh, like, give you some pointers. Like, a lot of guys come in here and they're just stuck. Mm -hmm. You know, I give them a few pointers because, you know, I want, I want to help them, you know, along the, along the way. 
And I think if they got that creative drive in them, that creative bug in them, that they can go and watch a couple of YouTube videos and really, really want it. Like, I just pushed every button on Photoshop so I could see what it was. <laughs> so it took it took me a, it took me a minute to to know <laughs> what to do. And once I learned, you know, how to do certain things, I might do it a whole totally different way than you cuz you learned it from the the proper way to do it. This is the button that you use to do this. But by me, you know, pushing every button, I can achieve that same look, that same thing. It may be a different step it might be a less a lesser step but i can get that same look that you got doing it the proper way so my thing that i tell like most people uh when they want to learn something is go in there and don't be afraid you can't break it right so you go in there and you just start learning you know the different buttons on what they do or whatnot or look at a couple of uh youtube videos and i had a i had a a, a computer on, over here and while I'm looking at a computer over here I'm doing exactly what the computer uh, is telling me to do over here like right now it's, I still it's, do that to yeah. this day so <laughs> it's, it's different so and then I got I pretty much have an have an eye for you know um, flyers and things like that and what I kind of tell people to do is to get an understanding on how a flyer is supposed to look is you look at flyers yourself every day. So what you want to do is you want to pick up a flyer and know it's something that looks visually good to you. Like, why does this flyer look good? Right? Right. Why does, why does uh, this business card look good? Why does this banner look good? It's certain things. I don't know if they, they teach you this in school. Like a banner is supposed to, get attention right so right. is is there is there anything that you can like uh uh tell the audience that you learned in school that's very valuable that a person can use along the way if it's just one thing what would it be no did we, we said it it is it's the speed this just the speed this speed is there any other thing other than other than speed because we'll, we'll, they teach you certain color theories if you're trying to get attention for a banner red is the most so attention. That, that's that's the things i'm they, looking for yeah they see they teach you things like that so, uh even in uh photography uh the uh, depth of field if you're trying to you know a blur background and make something else pop out they, they teach you little they stuff like all that, that all the time okay what i would say to you is i agree 100 percent that you do not need to spend the amount of money that I spent if you're trying to get into this field. What I will say, the other thing I'll say to you is I do believe that you had schooling. It was just from a different teacher. Mm -hmm. Your uh, dad with the photography, that's where you, you, your, your eye is from that. How you know what to look for, how to place images you you get that from right, him. Right, right. He he was your teacher. Right. Now so it, I didn't I didn't have one. Mm -hmm. I I I didn't have your a dad teacher. Was, your dad was a photographer. He was a photographer, well. but he died when I was very young. Okay. So I didn't I didn't get to I, I didn't get to get the teachings from him. Mm -hmm. I learned some things along the way from the other photographers that he had worked with, but even still, your your learning, your mentoring was just a different route that that I did. Mm -hmm. And from that you were able to take that and turn it into this. So then you, like, if you could watch a YouTube video, yeah, you can get it from that. But if you, like, ever watched a YouTube video, like, tried to bake a cake and, like, it, right. it, 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 it just caves don't turn in. Out right. it just, you did the exact right. same thing. That went, eventually you get it, but your mentor would teach you how to get it a little bit faster. So I agree that you don't need to spend the amount of money. I spent the amount of money because I, I didn't have a mentor that was there who, who could do that. But I do believe that you there was some schooling that led you to the point where you are now. Right. It started from it started right. from that. Right. I can see like the different things that I learned with photography that gave me a tremendous amount Ab of knowledge. Absolutely. As far as like even composition and balance. Absolutely. So you need all of that. So with me being in that field of photography, it gave me a, a big help in, you know photo restoration. You know that the the, the when people first get in uh, Photoshop, they use all those um, what are those filters and, yeah, and things you can yeah. use. But you know, 
you don't need all of those. Right. You need a very small shadow. Mm-hmm. You know that. Right. Because you know how light is supposed to affect this. Right. And you learned that from photography from your right. dad. Right. Yeah, the first thing I wanted to do was put a stroke on it. I found out that stroke. Couldn't help button, it. I put fire I on everything. Put a stroke on everything. Stroke, I'm put a stroke. lens, <laughs> yeah. flares, a oh, gradient yeah. on every yeah. single and, letter. And and in certain situations, you learn that you don't need that type of stuff. And, and no, in yeah. every situation, you yeah. know you don't. You learn. You, know, you <laughs> learn in, in every in every situation. You learn to compress that down because a graphic designer takes information. And makes it beautiful, but he has to make the the important information important, so you know what to put a stroke on if you need to, mm-hmm. or a grade it, and you know it doesn't go everywhere. Right, that's the difference between that that the professionalism and 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 not the professionalism. So, so you know now now this artificial intelligence is is coming out. Yeah, it's out. Not coming out. It's out. It's here. So, does that help you? Yes. Do I'm sorry. I'm. There's no reason not to do it better. Right. There's no there. I I don't I don't learn the art, understand the art, but there's no reason not to do it better. My uncle's a, my uncle has a photography studio uh, called Distinctive Portraits, and. Um, Photoshop just came out with this, uh, this this beta thing that is magic. You know they they sent me a it text is about just, this beta thing. It is magic. Okay, I have it. Literally rewrites the pixels into I. I'm, it's incredible. But see, Anyways, but see what you're saying is it rewrites the pixels, so you understand what pixels are. A lot of us don't know the basis, so that right, right yeah. there is a good reason that you have a base and a knowledge. There's a balance to know what's going on behind the scenes, right? So just like with photography, you want to open up the camera to see what this, this aperture is and how this shutter. Uh, reacts with the the aperture and how light works so what you're saying is pretty much the same thing is you want to learn why things do different things and that way your end project is going to come out better even if you're giving some some, this artificial intelligence a prompt to to know what your end result is going to look like it's the difference between someone taking um a website generated website mm-hmm. and making a website from scratch. Right. There's no reason not to take the website generated website, but because you have the knowledge of the inner workings, you make it into something more faster. They, a lot of web web developers with coding, they take plugins, how we take a flyer and then we just add to it. Sometimes they'll take plugins mm-hmm. and they'll snap that in there. They have plugins that they used already that they already built websites with. They'll take that, they'll throw it in there, snap it. But because they know how to manipulate everything, you can change the color. You can put a stroke on it. You can, it's that inner learning, that knowledge of inner workings just adds that much more to it. So as a graphic designer, someone like yourself, I already know that you you know that uh, artificial intelligence is going to be a help for you. It is a help. How would you explain to another graphic designer that this artificial intelligence is is not going to take his job? Like, what would you tell him? Because, like, I I talk to a lot of graphic designers and like they're pissed. They're looking. Uh, I, I, look, I look at some of the comments on some of the artificial intelligence uh, um, programs and how they commenting on it, and they like this is crap. This is bull crap. So they, they're actually getting scared. So is it a, is it a reason for them to get scared? Is it gonna? Is it really gonna take some of their jobs? Artists used to take egg yolk. And mix it with 
with the water or whatever paste or whatever or to make the color yellow to paint egg, egg yolk to 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 make yellow you don't think i'm sorry i believe that they would have been much happier with the different mediums of paint that are available today that you can just buy not mix egg yolk that are more vibrant, more beautiful, easier to use, faster drying, more sanitary. I make the beautiful art that they made then. They could do it times 10. It's the same thing with us. You always take the tools, the better tools, to do the job better. Always. Mm -hmm. There's no reason not to understand the art. And then make it better with the tools and the time that it brings. I that sports illustrator obituary that we made yesterday. One of the the one of the front cover pictures wasn't that great. So I asked the AI program, can you fix this up a little for me? Cause I it's an obituary. It's really important to these people. You want it to be the best it can be. So I asked the program to do it for me, and it did. Right. So you in that situation, at, it, it's something, a picture that they cherished, that they wanted to use. Yeah. So without telling them, hey, look, this picture is trash. We need you to pick another picture. So at that no, point. No, this is their picture. We picked this picture, and it looks amazing. Like, wow, how did you do that? So at that point, it helped, it helped us out. It absolutely helps. You right. use it where you, use use it where it you need it. necessary. And it only makes it stronger, better, faster. Sound like CYPT. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the important thing between that. that that's the importance in, in graphic design. Uh, it is the speed. And always make sure that you, you know, you get that balance. Know why this works, but always work to make yourself faster. Mm-hmm. As long as you as long as you're fast, you're top in graphic design. If you are fast and you're skilled, you can make it in this industry. One one of my teachers in Specs Howard told us that he made a hundred dollars an hour. When I was in school, I was like, that is insane. It's because if you charge on the clock. A hundred dollars an hour, or like you give me a project, and I'm gonna do this. Well, project that's what in an that hour. that that's what it was. That that's what it was. It I'm gonna do this project in an hour, and I can make a hundred dollars, and I can make hundred dollars an hour, and that's where schooling comes in. The, there's a story of the guy in the boat, the 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 boat and the hammer. These people have a boat, they can't get it started. They call the boat guy. The boat guy comes over, and they tell him what the problem is. Boga says, okay. He picks up a hammer out of his bag. He hits the boat at a certain spot and tells him to turn the boat on. And they did. It worked. They said, how much is it? Uh, you know, for your services. Said ten thousand dollars. What? He- it only took you ten <laughs> minutes to do this, but it took him ten years to know where to hit it at. <laughs> to learn where to hit it. <laughs> yeah. It's that balance. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You are listening to CYPT Podcast. You are listening to CYPT Podcast. You are listening to CYPT Podcast.